Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. I'm talking to my friends, Corey and Tiffany. Guys, thanks so much for doing this with me. Thank you for having us. Great to see you again. Yes. Well, you guys look great. I'm taking time out of your uh, precious day there in California. Um, is that kind of a little bit of a, you know, work live kind of thing? Is it purely just vacation, vacationing? What are you doing there? Well, uh, you introduced us as investor life and that's, that's what we really believe in is like living your investor life as you're building in your journey, not just, you know, waiting till you're 65 and ho hoping you get there and then hoping things work out for you to be able to enjoy life. Enjoy it now. So, uh, yeah, we're enjoying life now. Yeah, we work a little bit while we're here, but it's about, uh, it's about living. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. You guys, um, you know, as young as you look, uh, you've been doing this a while. Tell me a little bit about the story. You know, and, and even even the two of you coming together, you know, and then getting into investing to uh, share with the viewers a little bit about that. Absolutely. So we uh, we got into actually it was all Tiff's idea. She was the smart one. Uh, she started looking at real estate as a possibility for us to uh, start our business, get in, get into real estate investing. Uh, that was back in like 2003 ish that she started doing that research read all the books, went to all the seminars, uh, all, of them. all of them that came to town. Uh, and then we kind of just started doing it. We started buying properties. Um, it took us a while to get going, but uh, between 2004 to 2007, we ended up buying over 100 properties in the Edmonton area. Uh, so that was kind of our kickstart to get going. We got a lot of experience. We bought a lot of bad properties. We made some good decisions and some bad decisions. You know how it goes. Uh, and so that's, uh, that, that's was kind of what got us start. started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, since then, we've been maintaining that maintaining those properties and uh, doing many other, many other things as well within the real estate investing world. So, Well, let's talk about those other things in a second, but I just want to go back for a second. A hundred properties in three years. So, so how did that work? How did that work? Were you, did you have money partners and you were doing all the work? Did you, you know, win the lottery and bought all these things cash? Like talk to me about that three years and, yeah. and what, what did it look like? Uh, we basically, um, you know, learned as we went, crawled just like everyone else does from the beginning in, in all these concepts and understanding uh, the overall idea, but not knowing how to actually implement and all the overwhelm and fear and everything that comes with it. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, we uh, just started doing slowly. And yes, we used other people's money. We had no money. We were 24 years old. So um, and again, no rich uncles. So, yeah just started slowly, just like and everyone that, else. That's a really big point because, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have the experience or I don't have the money or I don't have the credit. Well, we had none of those things either when we first got started. Yeah. And, you know, there's a million excuses that we can line up. Uh, but at the end of the day, like Tiff said, we got one, we bought one property and then we bought one more property. And then it just started to snowball because it's not that difficult to do. And, and is this what you're still doing? Because I know, I mean, there's lots of things that you guys, I mean, you guys are, uh, you tour around, we've shared the stage together, you do a lot of coaching, mentoring, uh, training. Um, are you still actively, you know, buying doors, if you will? We just bought one uh, yesterday, Rav. So uh, while we're down here in California and uh, we picked up some property in Nova Scotia over the, the last few months as well. And yes, we're still doing some buying. We're still active in that side of things. We're much slower than yeah. we were back in the day um, and much more pickier and choosier now. I think we paused for, we, we, we did like we did our buying and then we paused for probably a good 10 years and kind of just said, yeah, we're, we're happy with where we are. We don't need more. We're not trying to buy ourselves a massive job here. Um, but just recently we started to see where we're interested in getting back in. So, but we're just piece working it. We're not, we're not going crazy at all. We did our crazy days already. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, um, they get into investing because they want to be able to, you know, enjoy family, friends, engage in a purpose that's greater than themselves. And you watch their lives and, you know, um, I want to say to no fault of their own, but perhaps they have to take ownership. What they've done is they've just created a second or a third or a fourth job um, and they forget why they did it in the first place. I know you guys uh, fight really, really hard. That's why I'm grateful that you're with me today. What's the key? How do you how do you make sure? Because, you know, sometimes our nature is more, more, more. And 
once you've done it, it's easy to do. And, and, and the more successful you are, the more opportunities come your way. And so for Corey and Tiffany, how do you stay on point with your faith, with your, your family life, your, your fitness, your sunshine? Like, how do you make sure that you don't get caught up in all this? And I think it's a really important, you know, uh, topic because everybody it wants is. to not get caught up, but then we get caught yeah. up. Yeah. We, we were, uh, we were talking about this last night actually, yeah. because, uh, uh, anyway, I won't get into the story why we were talking about it, but it's so true. I think the number one word that we try to keep at the top of our minds as we're going through all of this is simplify or keep it simple. Um, because like you said, things can get complicated. Our lives are, we only have so much time and, and, and what are we filling it with? Uh, we don't want to fill it with more work. We want to fill it with things we enjoy doing. Um, you know, so time with the people that matter. we have to take uh, we have to have this discussion between the two of us on a regular Even, basis because it's so easy for us to say, well, why don't we just do this? And why don't we, we do, do that? And, and, you know, we can do that and this and, and look at what the returns would be. Uh, but we don't want what it. are we going to lose if that's what our focus is? And that's what we have to keep in front of us is we want to keep. Like you said, our family time, um, our time together, uh, our vacation time, things we enjoy doing in life are more important to me than, you know, a number in a bank account, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah you know, and it, but it's a catch-22 because to be able to do what you're doing now, 20 years ago, you, you were cranking, right? And so it's, you know, I think one of the answers is, is to have, to be humble enough to have people around you and, and, and perhaps not in the industry, to be able to be able to say, hey guys, you seem like you're really busy or you're tired or you don't have enough margin in your life. Or, you know, what's funny is we, we, we have a friend, Don Campbell, of course, and um, I was chatting with Don the other day and I said, you know, I want you to come on my show via Zoom. Um, and I wanna talk about this topic, you know, um, real estate investing for the things that matter most. And I really loved his answer. He says, Rav, I'm gonna be in Australia with friends at that time because I'm practicing the topic that you want me to come and talk about. I can't come on the show, you know? And, and I just loved that. I love that he, you know, uh, said that um, some other time when I'm, you know, freed up, but I want to continue to be with my friends and travel because that's why I did this in the first place is what he said. And, you know, you guys have always been like that. And, you know, um, no, go I was ahead, just going to say, like, okay, Don, Don is one of the reasons why we even started on this kind of journey of what are we doing? Because we saw how he taught us how to gain our freedom. He taught so many people. He was a great mentor to us. And yet he was there working away, working away, working away. And we would say to him, Don, you look tired. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. But he needed to make that change. And it took, and we've seen this so many times, it took until the last straw when it was like, okay, no more, I'm not doing this anymore. And we thought we don't want to get there before it gets there. And we see lots of investors leave investing before they should have, before the real wealth kicks in and all that because of the impact on their lifestyle. So he's one of the reasons, and he taught us through example, why you don't push it to the last minute because it's just not, you, you don't enjoy it anymore. And, and what's the point? What's the point in that? You know, I'm, I met my wife when I was 15. We started dating. I was 15. She was 14. I'm 50 now. So 35 years later. Um, but Sinead, like, obviously she likes, you know, that we can travel and so on and so forth. But genuinely, if our family of four lived in a basement apartment, you know, and rented, she could care less. She just, she's big into, you know, our faith and family and, and so on and so forth. So she's the guide for me, you know, because I'm, my, my nature is, like I, I always say, I'll drive by vacant land and say, oh, there's a tractor trailer parking lot there. Let's build a, a, you know, outdoor storage or so on and so forth. And she has to bring me back. And so I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have that. Uh, talk to us um, where, I mean, you guys have a great marriage. Um, the, the, when a husband and wife do this together and they're both, I mean, it, it can be a lot of fun but it could be problematic as well. Talk to us a little bit about that. <laughs> Where, do you want me to start or you want to start? <laughs> go for it, go for it. Um, yeah, absolutely. We've worked together actually in our previous business as well uh, before we got into real estate. And so there was a lot of lessons that we needed to learn right from the very beginning. And um, I think one of the number one things that helped us is we just uh, had 
clear boundaries on what each other's responsibilities are. Uh, and we know, we know that ahead of time. So, you know, yeah, TIFF takes care of A, B, C, and D, and I take care of E, F, G, H, you know? So we have, we know what uh, part of the business, even though we work together, we have separate departments that we take care of. And we help each other in those, but at the end of the day, he has final say in his departments and I have final say in mine, because otherwise, if you've got two captains steering that boat, I'll tell you, <laughs> the captains fight for sure. Um, and sometimes the captains quit. We each quit on <laughs> each other at different times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you have to be really definitive in just respecting boundaries and saying, well, this is your call. So here's my thoughts, but it's your call on it. And, and, and that's it. We're going to take a quick break, but um, I'll leave you with this. What happens though, when an opportunity comes to Corey or an opportunity comes to Tiffany and one of you really, you know, we really need to get into the, you know, mo mobile homes, you know, and you know, the trailer, the, the trailers, or we really need to get into stock options or we really, something really, you know, comes your way. How do you decide? I'll leave you with that. We'll get the answer when we come back. We're talking to my good friends, Corey and Tiffany. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. I'm talking to Corey and Tiffany Young about how to make money in real estate, what that money means. Um, it really means spending time with family and friends. Uh, we're going to touch on the power of leverage. Uh, guys, uh, before we went to break, I, I asked you as a couple, whenever you know, you're know you faced with a great opportunity, maybe for one of you and, and not necessarily the other or you know, you've already set your boundaries and this might push it. Like, how do you work that out? Because there's a lot of husband, wives, you know, um, husband, husband, wives, wives. There's a lot of, you know, couples that are, are getting in the game together and it can be a disaster or it can be a wonderful thing. And I've known you guys for a long time and, um, you know, again, been able to be in the same groups together, seminars, speaking engagements, and you have a wonderful marriage. And I just want you to be able to share you know, obviously it takes work, discipline, intention. Um, share with us how that, how that works when an opportunity comes your way that maybe you need to say no to. So, so I'll answer just kind of briefly. So, I mean, it's, it basically comes down to we have what we know as our goals. We, we have those together. We don't have separate goals. We have goals together. And basically when something comes along, we ask ourselves, does this hit toward our goal or not? Because sometimes it's exciting and we want to do it, but we realize that it actually isn't going to buy us what we are looking for out of our lifestyle or out of our relationship or whatever it might be. So just measure it against our goals. And then, you know, if one of us wants to and the other one doesn't, well, the goals are going to tell you whether or not you can because you've already agreed to those. So and I think, it, it's a non-issue. Yeah, if we're going to move forward on something, we both need to be on the same page because it's just not going to work if one of us is pushing it forward and the other isn't. So, you know, we have that discussion um, and it, you know, it comes down to like Tiff said, is it going to bring us closer or farther away from our ultimate goals? So Yeah. No, no, I love that. And, and I think that's so important because you're right. When you, when you come together and you have your goals in place, then it's easy because it doesn't match, even though it's fantastic. And other people won't understand why you're not doing it, but you'll understand because their goals don't match your goals. Everybody is different. And so when any, anytime somebody says, Rav, what's the best investment or what should I be? I can't answer that question. You've got to, you know, dig deep and figure out what, what you're doing, why you're doing this and, and do you want to do it? If somebody wants to work nine to five, 40 hours a week and they've got a pension, but they sleep at night and they're happy, God bless you. Like this is not, you know, uh, not everybody has to do it the way that, you know, you, you do it or, or how I may do it. So great, great answer. Thank you so much. And that's really why I wanted you uh, on the show. It's not about teaching us per se um, about real estate, although you guys are very good at it. What's your shirt say? And what does that mean there? Uh, is that just a Nike shirt or is that your own branded shirt? <laughs> yes, that's our own brand. This is our coaching group. Um, and uh, our, our, we call them ignited members. And that's because we give them the tools that they need to ignite their, their lives, their real estate journey. And so, and not just, not just their portfolios, but their lives. It is a big part of what we say, you know, people, you know, we do deal reviews for people or whatever. And, and we're like, well, listen, that's like, looks like an awesome deal, but do you want to hate your life? Yeah. Because that sounds like a heck of a lot of work and, you know, or whatever it might be. So yeah, it's, um, 
it's our it's our mentorship program and it's all about investing and living so people are watching they 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 see this uh Wonderful couple, bought 100 properties in the first three years, been doing this for a couple of decades now. They're sitting in California. They also want to be nurtured. What, what is Ignited.com? Is it Facebook? Is it where do we go? Where, does, where do the viewers go if they want to um, have more nurturing from you guys? Uh, two spots, investorlife.com. Uh, that's one spot you can find us. And second, our group on Facebook is Fearless Real Estate Investors. So if you search that up, you'll find our group. We uh, are continually growing and uh, we'd be happy to have anybody that's looking to uh, get into real estate investments or, uh, yeah, have any goals towards that. So for sure. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, for offering that. Um, so, you know, often we we... We forget what we know. You know, we think that other people know what we know. Um, and you know, Tiffany, when you when you thought about, you know, Rev, we should talk quickly about the power of leverage. I mean, for um, you know, investors that have been doing this for a long time, we know to put down as little as we can and get some cash flow and properties increase and somebody's paying down our our uh, mortgage and so on and so forth. But you know, we forget that other people just may feel more comfortable just paying cash but then the returns are not quite what they could be, you know? Um, and again, whatever helps you sleep at night, but I do want people to know that there's power in leverage. So um, I know you, you teach this um, uh, from a very simple level to a, to a very high level as well. You've got graphics and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe we'll throw those on the screen, but why don't you take us a little bit about this concept um, of leverage and what does leverage mean? and you know, it's kind of one of the biggest difference between the stock market and real estate, right? We can leverage in real estate as opposed to, to, to stock. So talk a little bit, take a few minutes and, and talk to me a little bit about that. Awesome. So, you know, ultimately it comes down to this is a type of investment where we can use other people's money. So that means people can invest with us, uh, but that also means that we can even use bank's money. We can get mortgages on our investments. We can make a return on our investment using the bank's money. Which, and so like that's, you said, we can't do it in the stock market for sure. Right. So that's, that's what makes real estate stand out among, you know, all the other, most other types of investments that you can get into. So um, this actually came uh, up to the forefront for us just a, a few months ago, we were looking at a property and you know, we thought, well, why don't we just buy it cash? We don't have to have a mortgage on it. We don't have to, you know, our cash flow is going to be amazing because we won't have a mortgage. And then I stopped and thought, hey, uh, I'm getting into that same trap that a lot of others get into as well. We would actually get a way better return on our investment if we did use a mortgage. Um, and so that's really why we go through this example um, to kind of clarify those thoughts. Um, so I don't want to get too deep into the numbers because it can get complicated trying to explain this. But uh, for those that see the infographic that's on the screen, um, if you have two investors, and so we name them Sean and Karen, okay? So you have two investors. One of them, Sean is going to use his 500000 okay? So we're just going to pick a number, 500000 He's going to put that amount, buy a house for $500,000. That house uh, rents for $3,000 a month. He's got his regular taxes and expenses and all that sort of stuff. After his expenses, he uh, gets 2175 a month cash flow. Okay, so that's really, really good. But he buys it straight with cash. Karen, on the other hand, has the same five hundred thousand, but uses the bank's money and only puts a hundred thousand dollars down. Gets a mortgage for the rest. So that's twenty percent. Twenty percent down, which is what's required here uh, in Canada. Um, but that also enables her then to use that money to buy more houses. So she can now buy five of those same houses and own two and a half million dollars worth of real estate going up in value versus $500,000 going up in value. Now we can't guarantee real estate's gonna go up in value. We all know that. But uh, in Canada, on average, it's depending on where you look, somewhere between six and 8% over the last 50 years. That's what the Canadian average has been going up in value. So if we use a conservative number of 4%, and we look at Sean's $500,000 into that investment and Karen's $100,000 into that first house. Uh, and it goes up 4% in value. Sean made a 4% return. Good for him. That's great. But Karen 
because she only put 20% down and used the bank's money, got an ROI of 20% on the same, uh, on the same property. Um, and we can go a lot deeper now and say, okay, well, she bought five of those houses. And, uh, and so, you know, now she has two and a half million dollars going up 4%. So she's making uh, way more return on her money at uh, 20% on that 500,000. She's making a hundred thousand dollars return versus Sean's $20,000. So she's making a hundred percent on her money now. Uh, it gets complicated when we go through it quickly, but uh, it, it, it's, it clearly shows, and that's the important thing is um, when we use the bank's money or even for that down payment, maybe we use someone else's Money, an investor, partner, a joint venture partner, partner, whatever it might be, um, we can really maximize our ROI. No, no, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Really, if I've got $100, I can take that $100 and put it in one place, or I can take $20 and put it in five places. And of course, my return on investment is going to be um, a lot higher. And so, you know, there was a time here in Ontario, guys, where we could do it for 5% down. Um, I guess the, the question is, is how much should we be putting down? I know you guys, I mean, really the answer is what we feel comfortable with, but surely it doesn't necessarily have to be 100%, but somebody may say, I feel comfortable with half of it, you know? So maybe I'll put down 50%, or maybe I'll put down a third, I'll put down 33%. Um, yes, we only have to put down 20%, and yours truly is, is very comfortable with that. Um, and then there's other people, if you could, would be comfortable with, you know, 5%. So it all depends on your, your comfort level. But what I hear you saying is, and it's the, you know, the, the number one question we ask on this show is what's the return on investment? Sometimes you can have too much return and, uh, you know, I can't believe the show's over and we've got to go here in a, in a, in a second. Um, but I think you would say the same thing. Somebody puts down 20%, then they forget about it. And so now we've got to look at our return on the equity. Like there might be, as, as it goes up in value and somebody's paying down our mortgage, um, we might have too much in there. And so would you guys then refinance and take that money out and just leave it at the 20 and then do other uh, um, properties? What would you suggest there? There's a million things you can do. I think the one thing that we'd have to make sure though is that even if we did refinance and we pulled some of that money out, um, we want to make sure the property is still cash flowing. And to us, that's what's really, really important because, you know, when we go through tough times in real estate or markets drop or rents go down, uh, what protects us is the fact that we bought a property that cash flows um, so that we're not having to take out of our pocket to keep that investment going or, or over fire the years. sale it. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is what it's all about. It's about being in it long term. This is not a get rich quick type of uh, scenario. It's, you know, buy and wait and let the market do its thing. Let the tenants pay down your mortgage, reap that cash flow as it goes along. And uh, that's how it works. Guys, thank you so much for taking time away from your family, uh, away from your little vacay there. Thank you. I really, really appreciate you guys being on the show. Thank as you for always, having Rob. us, Rob. It was great yeah. to see you again, too. Always.